OMGBBG! What's going on guys? Welcome to another BBG Talks. Today we have so much to talk about. It's Beyblade Day, pretty much Beyblade weekend because 3, 2, 1, March 21st, right? We watched all the announcements and we had some time to digest everything. So let's talk about it. Yo, I hope that Beyblade Day becomes a thing every single year. That would be unreal, man. Like every spring, every March 21st, we have some big announcement from the Beyblade world. That'd be unreal. But yeah, anyways, let's dive right in. Yeah, exactly. It's nice that Keratomi, it's like starting to kind of push that trend. So I think we will get something every year. But yeah, they definitely announced something pretty cool yesterday um, in Japan time. First of all, they announced a new PV, like a new trailer. It's following the similar like uh, vibe from the very beginning of the Beyblade X uh, promotional video where, you know, we had like all the crazy cinematography and people from all ages playing Beyblade and stuff like that. So they did something similar here. Um, it was pretty cool. Um, so you guys definitely go check it out on the Beyblade X channel. We'll leave the links in the description below. You got like the chefs in uh, in the yeah. like random restaurant. They're like playing Beyblade after hours and stuff. It's like, that's actually stuff that we do all the time in real life, so. Yeah, like there was something about the new PV that just made me so proud being part of the Beyblade community. It's so inclusive at this point, right? And before, no lie, sometimes I felt like we're almost a little bit, I wouldn't say like outcasts, but like outliers in the community because we're a little bit older than the main demographic of the brand. But now it's like literally for everyone. And so everyone coming together and using Beyblades, playing Beyblades, competing with Beyblades, like, yo, the feel that you get from this new PV is just something that can't be described. And, uh, it's not like any other PV that we've gotten from previous generations, in my opinion. Yeah, one uh, really fun, like awesome thing that I heard from the announcement yesterday, um, to like, translate it back to English pretty much, they were saying how it's like, regardless of like your background, you're still like battling and that experience translates all over. So yeah, that's Word. pretty cool. Yo, yeah, that's actually such a good tidbit from that. Like that's a great explanation of like the new culture that they're trying to implement with Beyblade. That's actually sick. So yeah, go watch that PV if you guys haven't. It's inspirational, in my opinion. Uh, the next big thing that they announced from the Takeru Tomi side of things was the 2024 World Championship event. And so World Championships obviously are not a new thing, but this is the first time that people of all ages will be able to compete. So that's huge. Yeah, so they have like the regular uh, tournaments where they're age restricted, but this is the first time that a world championship will actually have an open category where anyone can join. So that's pretty sick um, that they're focused on, on bringing that experience to everybody. Yo, word for real, like now we can compete, man. <laughs> it's like, and like our moms and dads and grandpas can compete. Like, yo, it's, it's so cool. Yeah, and it'll be held like later in 2024. It's true, it's cool, but at the same time, you can tell that they're still focused very much on the Asia side of things. Like they're having that you know, Asia tournament that they're creating, which they're holding like the Grand Prix and stuff like that in the summer. So I think that from the Hasbro side, we're still lacking a little bit of like the same tournaments that we get to join. Like, but hopefully they kind of increase that um, emphasis on the North America market. Uh, but so far, Takeratomi is so, super focused on bringing that uh, international tournament thing across Asia. Yeah, exactly. Like, especially in Japan, dude, they have tournaments like every day, pretty much. You know, like obviously different tiers, but having tournaments in Tokyo or in Osaka or like in Japan in general, is it's not rare, right? Like it's actually very common. So hopefully that will translate over to the international market. You know, someone will take the reins and they'll actually organize something, right? Make it a more yeah. regular thing. Especially when we're going to talk about the uh, Hasbro, like you guys heard from, like we're getting Takara Tomi parts now, right? So uh, yeah, okay, we're not going to get ahead of ourselves. Let's just finish up the, the Takara Tomi announcements first. Um, that brings us over to the second point that they were having is they announced a bunch of crossover projects that they are planning on rolling out this year. Um, so first of all, Drigger is the representative of the Plastic Gen that they are remastering. Release date, April 27th, right? Everybody loves Drigger. Um, so Love all Drigger, those OGs, man. you guys are gonna enjoy this one for sure. Um, from the Metal Sega, they are bringing back Storm Pegasus. So they announced that one. Another Good choice, w. main character, Another right? W. Jenga. And then for Beyblade Burst Remaster, they're bringing Victory Valkyrie. 
So also from main character, Feltz. Yeah. What do you guys think of it's that? Actually, like, is it overplayed? It's kind of crazy that Drigger is being remade, but it's not like Dragoon. And because, you know, we're getting Storm Pegasus, right? You know, mm. the first evolution for Jenga, and then we're getting Victory Valkyrie, first evolution from the anime True. for, True. you know, Vault. But, you know, it's like Drigger, Dronzer, it's like no Dragoon. It's like no one likes Tyson. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, like they gave us Dronzer and now Drigger, right but the still didn't give us Dragoon. That's true. Um, yeah. The other thing that they are telling us about is Beyblade Bar. So the Beyblade Bar events or the venues, like limited time events, are going to be held in Japan once again. The theme this time is on the 25th anniversary. So previously they did like a Beyblade Burst Bar, um, and I think that was in Tokyo only, but now they're bringing it into Osaka and Nagoya as well. So looking back at the 25th, uh, or to, to, oh, the past 25 years, um, hopefully we see some cool installation. Um, so if you guys are in Japan in this, uh, this summertime, I'm sure you'll be able to you know, join Beyblade Bar and try out some food and stuff. I think it'll be a, yeah. a cool thing. Yeah, hopefully they have something special because it's like the whole 25th anniversary theme, right? Because previously with Beyblade Burst, they did have it for like a couple iterations and they mainly just showed like a showcase of bays. And then of yeah. course the, the food was themed after Beyblade, but Really, yeah, you just yeah. went there to look at bays. Hopefully, they have something else a little bit more elaborate for the 25th anniversary. Yeah, like, like an exclusive release or a colorway of a bay or something like that. That would be sick. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or, or, even like, or even other type of merch, right? That's exclusive to the Beyblade bar for the 25th anniversary. Like, that would be unreal, too. True, true. Mm -hmm. um, and then, I guess, uh, the last thing that Takeru Tomi talked about in their Beyblade Day announcement was the collaborations that they're doing with other brands. Um, so we've seen that before with like more prominent things like for example like the Hello Kitty stuff from Beyblade Burst that, that was a pretty big collab that they actually released bays for but these collaborations that they're doing now is more like just exposing Beyblade X to different venues yeah, or different, different events different, yeah different industries and different markets like they're not really doing anything big like designing a brand new Beyblade more of just like hey let's put the face of like these soccer players on a Beyblade poster and then vice versa, right? So yeah. yeah, or like showcasing Beyblade X gameplay in some of these like football events or something like that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's pretty cool, I guess. Um, you know, large or small, at the end of the day, like if they are doing more collabs with different markets, like it's still gonna benefit the brand. So go for it, man. Keep on throwing Beyblade stadiums in random spots, you know? Yeah, exactly. Okay, so that was pretty much the Takeru Tomi announcements. Um, overall, like, it's cool, but it wasn't, it was like a lot of appetizers that we got mm -hmm. from that, uh, that video. Um, the meat and potatoes, or the Hasbro announcement, surprisingly. Yes, Usually, sir. like, it's Takeru Tomi that bless us with all the news, but this time, Hasbro, oh man, there's so much to talk about. Yeah, Beyblade Day last year was all Takeru Tomi because that's when X came out or was officially True. launched, right? Mm -hmm. And now this year, Beyblade Day is all about Hasbro because everyone around the world has been waiting for this, right? A lot of people don't have access to, to Takeru Tomi stuff and frankly, the Japanese market is just very closed, right? Like you can't participate in all of these different events and all these collabs and stuff and even some of the products, right? Like think about the Rare Bay Get Battle and everything like that. It's just so exclusive to Japan and now we're finally getting the Western or globalized version of Beyblade X. Yeah, and some of you guys were like anticipating, okay, maybe Hasbro's not coming back and there's just gonna be Takeru Tomi Bays all around for us, but that's not gonna be a thing. Hasbro is nope. still gonna be a partnership with to release everything for North America and, and international. But the cool news is we were actually quite impressed because they announced how the bays are gonna look like, what the release schedule is gonna be like, um, what bays are being released in this first wave, and they are really focusing on emphasizing that this is Takara Tomi parts. Like in the article where um, on Screen Rant, they mentioned Takara Tomi like three times, and talking about how it's the original Japanese design, same feel, same weight, uh, same system, right? So that's pretty impressive. So let's dive in. Yeah, so I'm wondering if Hasbro actually, you know, took the feedback that everyone gave them from the Beyblade Burst days and actually implemented it, you know? They're actually going out of their way to mention that these are going to be just like Takeratomi Bays. 
man, maybe they're trying to correct past mistakes, you know? Yeah, I like it. I think they found also the success of Pro Series and what that meant for everyone who bought Pro Series, like they really enjoyed it. And so that is the play here. And exactly. I hope it's like even better quality in Pro Series. I hope it's literally the same thing. And that way, you know, bladers from all over the world can actually use the same parts and it's interchangeable with the Japanese releases. And in tournaments, it's, it won't be like actual separate. Like they can use the same parts, right? How cool would that be? Exactly, and that's the whole thing, right? Because Takeru Tomi and the Japanese market is trying to push the idea that, or the entire message that Beyblade is for everybody. But if you have part of the world using subpar combos and parts, then that's not really, really, you know, upholding that message, right? So you need everyone to be on the same playing field, and therefore everyone needs to have the same quality of parts. And I think. Yo, like this is it guys like maybe we really will have the same thing from hasbro you know the entire life of beyblade x anyways let's dive into the actual stuff that was announced in terms of products the very first thing that everyone probably saw was the beyblade x extreme battle set we are getting drawn dagger but it is now called dagger drawn <laughs> and looks like we're getting stacked uh sorry stock parts 460r and yeah, yeah, I don't know why they're reversing the name. I actually think Drawn Dagger sounds way better than Dagger Drawn. Yeah, and um, uh, uh, Kalman X is now Blader X, and also his name is Jackson. It's Wild. the most like American name I've ever heard. And it's Jackson with the uh, X, J-A-X-O-N. <laughs> like, to be fair though, you know, Common X or Xu Cross, his legal name being X cross essentially is it's kind of whack, you know. <laughs> Vault was like a you know, quote, a real name, Jenga, kind of like a real name, but you have like X and then yeah, cross, yeah. which is basically another X. So I'm, I'm just not used to it, you know. Like when we heard about Bird, that was also a funny name, too, right? So yeah, I'm glad I guess his name is Robin. If you guys like that, <laughs> it, yeah. it sounds more like a real name, exactly. So for that battle set, we are getting dagger drawn and we are getting Hasbro exclusives. So there, guys, like that's not going away. But to be fair, this Hasbro exclusive actually looks pretty legit, right? Yo, I was going to say too, like the stadium uh, also has this exact same number of pockets. And I think it's very similar to the to Karatomi version. Right? I actually think it looks even better too, because it has like the extra sticker or the branding on there. Mm. Um, it says like Beyblade X twice there, right? Um, but yeah, like the Hasbro exclusive bay is Tusk Mammoth and uh, it comes with 360 taper. Actually it, looks pretty it, when legit, I first guys. looked at it, I thought it was a Hell Scythe, but I think mm -hmm. there are some differences for sure. Um, yeah, it's interesting that they, they uh, have a battle set without uh, Bird's Bay in there. But Yeah, and the battle set comes with like the second evolution, not evolution, like the side evolution, you know? Like Dread, uh, uh, Drawn Dagger yeah. instead of Drawn Sword? Exactly, yeah. yeah. But we are still getting the other bays as well, right? So don't worry about that. Uh, yeah, yeah, so let's move on. Yeah, they are getting um, another, they are getting separate releases like Drawn Sword and the four classics, I guess, in starter packs. And they're also coming in a like a smaller ripcord, surprisingly. And they're also selling the black ripcord separately, which is interesting. Yeah, so it's coming with like that entry one, right? It's like that entry starter thing that we saw that Drawn Sword released with uh, around Christmas time. Yeah. It's kind of like the dinky one. Yeah. Mm, not a big fan of it, obviously, because the new ripcords are actually really good, right? But yeah, yeah. stock combos, right? Um, and yeah, all the bays, like they follow the same naming convention as Dagger Drawn. You know, we have like Arrow Wizard and it's uh, like backwards. Sword Drawn. Yeah, it's all backwards. Yeah. And yo, I don't know about Hell's Scythe, but we knew that Hell's Scythe was going to get renamed. Obviously, you can't have oh, yeah, Hells yeah, yeah. in it. So we got Scythe Incend Incendio. Yeah, like stuff, stuff like, you know, the Extreme Line is now called Ex Accelerator Rail. Uh, so yeah, it's something to get used to. Yeah, but everything overall just looks so good, though. I am still a little bit bummed about, you know, the main winder launcher being sold separately because that winder launcher is actually so good. And yeah, it kind of yeah. makes sense from like a marketing standpoint. It's like, yo, like, it's like the equivalent of a string launcher now, right? There's no like it's disadvantages so really. If anything, there's advantages of using the new winder versus like the standard string launcher. Mm. And so selling it separately is kind of smart. You know, you get a little yeah. bit more money out of them. Yeah. 
Um, what else? Uh, Beyblade X app is also being released uh, soon. Uh, by the way, all this launch is happening summer of 2024. So it's just in a couple of months, you're gonna see Beyblade X in North America. It's gonna start really fast. Yeah, and at first we thought it was coming out like in fall, you know? And so it's a little bit sooner than we thought, which is awesome. And same yeah. to anime too, right? Like that is also, I think, going to be uh, a little bit sooner than expected. Yeah, super exciting. Um, if you guys are watching this now before the official Beyblade X launch in North America, you guys are super early. Uh, I hope you guys are excited, but um, yeah, I will we'll leave all the links in the description below. Let us know what you guys think of these releases, what you guys thought of the Takeru Tomy decisions. Um, for the most part, you know, I still feel like they could be doing more, but I am very happy from the Hasbro news that the stuff that we're getting is, it looks good. Quality yeah. looks good from, from what I can see so far. Yeah, and let's stay positive, right? Because this is still the very beginning of Beyblade X in the Western market, right? So there's still room for growth. And if you are expecting a lot more, like just be patient, right? Like we might get tournaments, might get crazier collabs. We might get more exclusives that are actually really crazy. I don't, I have no idea, but you know, it's just the beginning. So that's pretty much it for Beyblade Day. Uh, obviously a very big day for the Beyblade community. Uh, some may argue that this is actually a bigger deal than last year's Beyblade Day, right? Because now it's actually the 25th year anniversary and Beyblade is going to be available worldwide again, right? So yeah, huge news. But once again, let us know what you guys think of all of the stuff that we talked about down in the comment section below. And yeah, get yeah, excited we'll for the year of Beyblade X. Yes, sir. All right. Yeah. That's it. Um, make sure you guys like the video, subscribe, and as always, Geeks, geeks out! out.